Sergeant Hines? Sergeant Hines? Yeah, Major. The dream is at hand. Sound Reveille. Hey, soldier boy. Kingsley. Reveille. We here? We've arrived. Virginia City. Ripe and ready. You did it, sir. That's right, Major. You got us here just like you said you would. Now, me and Soldier Boy here, we're gonna do our job. Ain't we, Soldier Boy? Fine. Now you know every detail of the operation. The hotel you're staying at, the man you're to see. And, uh, Sergeant, for the insurance of our success, stay away from Mr. Barleycorn. How do you mean, Major? Booze, Sergeant, booze. Stay away from it. Everything will go like clockwork, sir. I'll see to it. Hey, you just do that, soldier boy. Hey, Major, this Ponderosa you're going to, you sure you can trust them Cartwrights? That's the most painful part of all. They trust me. Oh! Sheep herders direct me to the Ponderosa Ranch Estate. <laughs> Come on up there, you old goat. I can get a good look at you. Give me a. <laughs> By golly, it's good to see. It's been a long time. Seems a century, Ben. Yeah. I want you to meet my son, Hoss. Hoss, this is Major John F. Cayley, one of my oldest and probably wildest friends. <laughs> How are you, sir? How are you, Hoss? Yeah, and this is the closest you'll ever get to a human bird in your lifetime, Hoss. He fly? Does he fly? By golly, he's probably got a pair of wings stowed in that in that wagon right now. Better than wings, Benjamin. Has the site been selected for my experiment? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I picked out a, a clearing for uh, as you requested. Now, what kind of experiments is the Army having out here, anyway? All in good time, Ben. All in good time. By golly. Come on, I want you to meet my two other boys. Hines, get up. Hines? What do you want, soldier boy? Hines, this is the bank. Get it? Now, don't make a mistake. That's real consider to you, soldier boy. <laughs> that ain't bad drawing, boy. Not bad at all. <laughs> hey, you know, when I get to be rich and famous, maybe I'll let you paint a picture of me. <laughs> Just keep sober long enough for us to carry out the Major's plan. <laughs> now, old John, the Major here, he just stood on this high bluff, oh, like a young Atlas with this pair of homemade wings strapped to his shoulders, waiting for a strong wind to come along. Well, what happened, Bo? Well, he just stood there waiting, and 
he waited and he waited and he waited. What, about two hours, John? That's right. Yeah. Just stood there waiting, and then suddenly that strong wind come along and just blew him right off the bluff. <laughs> Did he fly? <laughs> Did he fly? Mm -hmm. Broke both legs. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that was your last flight, huh? Oh, no. That only served to wet my enthusiasm. Boys, I'm convinced that someday we'll be up there. We'll be up there. We'll have an access to the skies that even the birds and the angels will envy. John, how's that beautiful little girl of yours? Although I guess by now she must be a beautiful big girl and married, eh? Diana. No, she's back east, Ben, in the family home. Now, why in thunderation didn't you bring her along with you? Oh, Ben, the fact is my daughter and I have been poles apart. My head's been in the clouds, and she, like her mother, God rest her soul, has had both feet firmly planted on the ground. Well, John, it's, it's awfully good to see you. Even though you did have to push that team of yours halfway across the continent by yourself. I have a couple of army men with me. I sent them on ahead to the hotel in Virginia City. Now, why did you do that? They should be right here in the Ponderosa with you. No, I wouldn't think of it. I couldn't impose, Ben. Impose? <laughs> Adam, you're going into town this morning, aren't you? Now, he could, he could bring them back. No, I think it would be better, Ben, if they... Nonsense. It's all taken care of. There. John, whatever this wild scheme of yours is, we'll help you. Oh, thank you, Ben. Thank well, you. Let's have some more coffee. Yeah. I'd sort of like to see what that experiment's all about myself, wouldn't you, Joe? Yeah, well, it has to do with jumping off a cliff and trying to fly. I better get Doc Martin right away. <laughs> I'm Private Kingsley, sir. Yes, Private. I have some official Army papers here from Major John Cayley, who's staying at the Ponderosa. He'd like them deposited in your safe for a few days. Oh, yes. Ben mentioned that the Army was planning doing some work out here. That's right, sir. I'll be glad to keep them for you. I'll be back for those papers in a day or two. That'll be fine. Come on in. You want something, mister? I'm Adam Cartwright from the Ponderosa. So? Uh, Major Cayley's already out at the ranch, and uh, well, we'd like to have you and your friend come out there and stay. Well, that's real nice of you, mister. But our orders are to stay right here in town. And the Major mentioned that. But it really isn't necessary. We have plenty of room. Mister, I've been in this army a long time. Major gave me an order to stay right here. I'll leave when the Major orders me to leave. Sergeant, I was supposed to see the Major this afternoon anyway. Good to have you show me the way, sir. I'll find out from the Major what he wants us to do, Sergeant. Yeah, you just do that, soldier boy. In the meantime, I'm going to find out what the inside of a Virginia City saloon looks like. Don't mind the sergeant, sir. He's old line army. Hasn't got much imagination. I don't believe we've met formal. I'm Private Kingsley. Adam Cartwright. Can I help you with anything? No, I don't believe so. It's nice artwork. Very professional. You do it? Yes, it's one of my hobbies. The army uh, takes such use of your artistic talents, Private? I've done some drawing for Major Cayley. Artwork? Wagons full of equipment, experiments. Just what is the army doing at the Ponderosa? The Major didn't tell you? No, I came here just as they were heading for the uh, testing site. That's just like the Major. Probably wanted you all to see it before he said anything. See what? He's going into the sky, Mr. Cartwright. Right up into the sky.
All right, grab the ropes. Haul her down. That's it, Ben. That's fine. Hold it steady. Good boy, little Joe. Stay with it. Hang on to it, Huss. Put your weight behind it. That is, don't let go now. Hold it steady. That's it. That's fine. Hold it steady. Good boy. Stay with it. Hang on to it, Huss. Put your weight behind it. That is, don't let go now. Hold it steady. That's it. That's it, Ben. Hold fast now, boys. Just about got it. All right, let go. We'll let the winch do the work. Hey, Johnny! Never seen anything like this before. It's fantastic. <laughs> hey, Pa, sh shouldn't, shouldn't Hoss let go of that thing? Hoss, let loose. Oh, don't, don't let go! Hoss! Boys, boys, come on down here. <laughs> Johnny! Johnny, you got... How do you like being carried along? Hey, Paul! Just like a big bird. Oh, help! Hey, Paul! Boys, hang on tight now, hang on tight. Hey! Oh! Boss! Oh! Hey! Oh, hold on! Johnny, how do you stop this contraption? Take it easy, Ben. You know I wouldn't let anything happen to you boys. Boss! Oh! Oh, Paul, oh, hold on! God! Oh, no! Oh! Oh, boss! Hey! Hang on! Oh, don't let go! Boss! Johnny. Boss! Boss, now, come on. Get out of there. You've had enough. Oh, Pa, just one I more... said you've had enough. I know just how you feel, Hoss. That boy is a born balloonist. Yeah. Oh, it's just like a big bird. You gotta try it. Sure, just like a big bird. You gotta try it. Well, this flying may be all right for little youngsters like you, Johnny, but... You'll change your mind, Ben, once you've tried it. Uh, no, I tried it. I'm not gonna change my mind. Joe, you're too young to be that old. Ain't you got no, no adventure in your soul? Oh, sure, I got adventure in my soul. It's my body I'm worried about. Don't you worry, Hoss. Don't worry. We'll show them. Tomorrow, we're really going to fly. Hot dog. Oh, Johnny, I think we ought to have one of the boys guard this contraption overnight. No, oh, it's perfectly safe, Ben. No wind. I wasn't thinking about the wind, huh? I was thinking about the neighbors. You know, they come along and see a contraption like this, think of some kind of sky demon or something, start emptying their guns into it. Now, one of you boys stay. I'll stay, Paul. On second thought, I think we'll feel safe if little Joe stays here. Yeah, don't worry, Oz. It'll be safe. I'm a lover, not a flyer. This, Ben, is my dream. Look at the size of that balloon, Paul. 400,000 cubic feet of hydrogen gas. What? You have to build them big if they're gonna carry passengers across the ocean. Across the ocean? Yeah, that ocean's mighty wide. 
Look, I, I, I don't want to sound naive, but what would you do if something happened to the balloon? These two auxiliary balloons set us down on the water light as a feather. Then what, swim? Float, boy, float. Yeah, by George, it does look sort of like a boat, don't it, Paul? It is a boat. And these two collapsible masts. Now, if anything should happen to the queen and she's forced down, all you do is pull these out and slip on the sails. Look at the inside of that thing, Paul. It's as plushy as a Virginia City hotel. Yeah, it sure is. John? I... Is this practical? What dream was ever practical, Ben? When you dreamed of building the Ponderosa, was it practical? But you achieved it because you believed in it. Ponderosa's different, John. Anyway, I had my sons to help me build that and, and Providence. Providence hasn't smiled on me. The winds are rising and the years hang heavy on my shoulders. Oh, what are you talking about? You, you're a major in the United States Army. You have the respect of a fine circle of friends. I'm a pioneer, Ben. I'm standing on the fringe of a new frontier without limits. Can't you see it? Skyways around the world. Continents are just waiting to be linked by airships. Airships? And the, the army is backing you in this idea. Well, not exactly. They were intrigued enough with my designs, but I'm afraid they found them too visionary. Well, John, I, I'm sure you know what you're doing. I know what you're thinking, Ben. A lot of other people are skeptical. Even my own daughter thinks I'm a silly old fool. Oh, John, I'm sure that isn't so. Oh, it's true. It's true. She never could summon up one ounce of faith in my dream, my, my plans. Well, I'm going to go check on little Joe and that, that balloon. See you in a minute. John? John, I... No, I'm... I, I'm not doubting you. How are you going to do all this? I'll build the Atlantic Queen, Ben. I promise you that nothing will stand in my way. Well, but you, you said yourself the army isn't backing you. Where are you going to get all the money? For I'll get the money. My backers have already been selected. Man will fly, Ben, no matter what the cost. Man will fly. Hadn't we better get going? Bill! Bill Kingsley! Oh, Diana, I didn't recognize you. What are you doing here in Virginia City? Where's my father? He isn't going to like it when he finds you here. Where is he? Uh, Private Kingsley, why don't you uh, introduce me to the young lady? Hmm? I'm sorry. This is Diana Cayley, the Major's daughter. Diana, this is Adam Cartwright. How do you do? Cartwright? That's where my father is. The Ponderosa. You're Ben Cartwright's son, aren't you? Please take me to my father. I must see him. Uh, Private Kingsley, why don't you uh, get Miss Cayley's luggage? Uh, you and Private Kingsley uh, know each other, I take it. We knew each other. 
It's all over now. I'm gonna get the feeling this is gonna be a long, cold ride.
Private Kingsley, sir. Here to see Major Cayley. Oh, yes, of course. Ben Cartwright, Private. I'm very glad to have you here. The uh, Major's inside. Won't you go in? Adam? Uh, I'm Diana. Oh, uh, that's right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Ben Cartwright. How do you do, Mr. Cartwright? Diana? Diana Cayley. Diana Cayley? Well, your father said you were back east. Does he know you're here? Well, not yet. I thought I'd surprise him. Well, he'll be surprised. <laughs> How did she find out where we were? As I said, sir, I don't know. Everything in town is ready. Good. Don't you think her being here might complicate things? Don't worry, son. I can handle her. I'm glad somebody can. Johnny! Johnny, you old W, you were keeping her as a surprise, weren't you? I'm afraid that Father is just as surprised to see me as you are, Mr. Cartwright. Of course, I'm delighted to see you, Diana, but... And now, Father, it's quite simple. I was dusting your study, and on your desk, I found your letter from Mr. Cartwright, welcoming you to the Ponderosa. So, I decided that since I'd never been west, this was the perfect opportunity. And here I am. I hope it's all right. Oh, well, you can bet your boots it's all right. I'm very happy that you're here. And I'm sure my sons are happy you're here, too. <laughs> uh, Major, if you don't mind, I'd like to go on out to the balloon site, make sure everything's in good working order. You have my permission. Well, uh... Robert Kingsley, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the way. Would you like to come along, Diana? Oh, goodness, no. I think I've seen enough of Father's old balloons. I think I'll just stay here and freshen up a bit. Well, of course. Now, uh, you just make yourself right at home. The Ponderosa's yours. Come along, Private. All right, Father. Why did you come here? You read the letter? Ben Cartwright, my friend, offered me a piece of land upon which to conduct my experiment. I also read some letters from the adjutant general's office. I didn't know they'd miss me so soon. What did you expect, Father? You're in the United States Army. You can't just go wandering off whenever you feel like it. They told me to select a site. Yes, in Pennsylvania. Not 2,000 miles away in, in, in Nevada. I am in command of that balloon, and I will select the site. The Army was willing enough to utilize my experience in developing observation balloons. But when I presented my real plan to the top generals, the nearsighted fools couldn't turn it down quick enough. Father, we've been over all this before. What does this have to do with your being here now? They want to know where you are. Don't you understand that? They'll find out soon enough. Don't you understand? Nobody wants your plans. They are impractical. The winds are rising, my daughter, and I must move skyward. Just once, will you try to listen to me, please? Your Atlantic Queen is never going to be built. Never. Now, please, please accept that fact. I can't accept it. I will never accept it. My airships will fill the sky over every ocean, over every city of every land. Man will find his destiny through the air. And my Atlantic queen will lead the way. Private Kingsley. Good evening, sir. How did you find things at the balloon site? Everything's ready, sir. Good. Now, you have your orders. You'll be able to withdraw the papers from the bank in the morning. Yes, sir. Now, what about Sergeant Hines? Is he ready? Don't worry, sir. He'll be at the bank in the morning as scheduled. And you, are you ready? I'm more than ready, sir. You know that. Good, Bill. Good. I think we'd better be at the balloon site to crack of dawn. We'll fill the balloon to capacity. That'll give you time enough to get to Virginia City and get your job done there. Yes, sir. I think we'd both better turn in early, Bill. Tomorrow's going to be a most momentous day. I'm afraid I'm too excited for sleeping now, sir. I thought I'd take a little walk first. Maybe a long time before I have my feet on the ground again. 
I understand. Good night, sir. Good night, Bill. I want to talk to you. Bill, I... Diana. So lost without you. No one to turn to. Father acting so strangely. Major Kelly will be all right, Diana. You shouldn't worry. But I do worry. Why is Father here without the Army's consent? gave you that idea. Letters from the army asking his whereabouts. Well, that's easily explainable. It's just that the experiment is a secret. It's a matter of utmost importance. Naturally, the army wants to cover it. And how long will it remain secret? Until tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll tell me? Tomorrow you'll know. The gondolas, real plushy, and it's shaped a whole lot like, like a ship. Anyhow, up above it, he's got this one great big balloon, and then he's got two little ones on either side in case a big one pops. He's going to call it the Atlantic Queen. Oh, that sounds pretty elaborate. I'd like to see those drawings. Well, yeah, Pod Hoss already signed up for the first trip across the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that'll be pretty exciting. I wonder if he'll ever get a chance to build it. Oh, if I know John Cayley, he'll build it. Come on, let's go out to the site and give him a hand. <laughs> Pa, Pa. Yeah, there's one thing I don't understand. What knowledge can the Major gain by taking the balloon up here that he couldn't have learned back east? Gee, I don't know. I never thought of that. Maybe the winds are better. I'm no balloonist. <laughs> Come on, are you coming? No, I'll come out later with Diane after she comes down. All right, come on, boys. Yeah, from what I've seen of Diane, I wouldn't mind switching jobs with you. Yeah, me too. She's cute in a bug, ain't yeah, she? Yeah, she is. Out, both of you. Oh, wait a minute. How come the older members of the family get all the privileges? Yeah, how come? Well, precisely because we are older. And wiser. Yeah, so, uh, let's go. <laughs> Good morning. Where is everyone? They all went out to the balloon site. Uh, have some breakfast? Oh, no, thank you. Just some coffee. All right, sit down. I'll get it for you. Well, I hear they're going to fly the balloon today. Yes, Bill Kingsley told me. What else did he tell you? I don't know what you mean. Diana, what's your father really doing here? Apparently, he's on some secret mission for the Army. What kind of secret mission? He couldn't say. You know that what they're doing here is wrong. That the Army hasn't given its approval at all. I may not agree with my father, but I know he'd never be part of anything that was wrong. Are you sure? I'm sure. 
You know where Bill Kingsley is? He's at the test site with Father, helping him get ready for the flight. No, he's not. He borrowed a horse this morning to ride into Virginia City to pick up some important papers from the bank. At the bank? Today's Sunday. The banks are closed. I know. Adam, what do you think's going on? Well, that's why I'm going into Virginia City. To find out. Adam, I want to go with you. All right. Mr. Herschel, Private Kingsley, isn't it? Yes, sir. I'm sorry to bother you this morning, sir, but I've been ordered by Major Cayley to pick up those papers I left at your bank the other morning. Well, I think it can wait until tomorrow, Private. This is Sunday. I'm on my way to church. Well, I'm very sorry, sir. Orders. Uh, Sergeant Hines is waiting at the bank for us now. Those papers must be mighty important. They are, sir. Believe me, they are. Very well, Private. We'll get them. Sergeant Hines. How do you do, sir? How do, Sergeant? What's the meaning of this, Sergeant? Fill it. What you? You'll never get away with it. Hurry it up! About full, Major. She's taking it to ropes. More ballast, little Joe. Right. That ought to do it. Thirty thousand cubic feet of hydrogen gas, gentlemen. That ought to take you clean around the world, Major. It might just do that, Haas. Listen, if them soldiers don't show up, you reckon you can make a room for me? <laughs> hey, Major, where are those men? They ought to be here any minute now. How's a look at the bank? Not a stir. <laughs> it's quiet as an empty bank safe. Now, remember, let's walk out of here slowly. And then we'll get the horses. We'll ride out slowly. We haven't got a thing to worry about. Money's concealed. We'll just be a couple of soldiers going out to the Ponderosa. Let's go. I'm going, soldier boy. But you're staying right here. Heinz, put that away. Soldier boy, I'm getting mighty tired of taking orders from a runny-nosed private. Now, you hand over that saddlebag. I'm taking this money to the Major. You ain't taking nothing, soldier boy. But I am. 
The Major's whole life is in this saddlebag. And I'll die before I'll see you put your filthy hands on it. Sweet dreams, soldier boy. What's holding everybody up? Adam and Diane should be here. Ah, don't worry, Pa. That'll be along. They wouldn't miss this for anything. <laughs> What's all the excitement, Mr. Herschel? The bank's been robbed. Somebody get the sheriff. Well, do you know who did it? Of course I know. It was those two soldiers. They got me to open that safe on some pretense about army, army papers. Somebody get the sheriff. Bill. You gotta stop Hines. Where's the money? Hines got it. Gotta stop him. Why? Why did you do it? It was to build the Atlantic Queen. The Major staked everything on getting this money. You gotta get me to him before he takes that flight. Please, before Hines gets to him. Well, let's get started before the Sheriff gets here. Sergeant Hines reporting, sir. I have the documents. Where is young Kingsley? Can I speak to you uh, alone a minute, sir? Excuse me a minute, Ben. Major, we gotta leave here right now. Where is Private Kingsley? He ain't coming. What do you mean, not coming? He caught a bullet, sir. He's dead. Dead? Major, we ain't got time to worry about him. We gotta leave while the leaving's good. But how? How? What happened? What went wrong? It was planned. It was all carefully planned. Major, I got enough money here to build that balloon of yours. Now let's get in that basket and get out of here. Anything wrong, John? We're going up, Ben. What about Private Kingsley? He won't be making this voyage. Give us a hand with the basket. Boys, mind releasing those secondary ropes? It was all so carefully planned. Release those ropes. Johnny, you ready? Yes, Ben, it's time. Release the ropes. Using us. His men just robbed the bank. What? The balloon's just a scheme to get away with the money. Kingsley, what happened at that bank? Seems the sergeant had a dream of his own. It'll make no difference now, Major. All right, Cartwright, cut that rope. Don't do it, men! Don't do it!
sorry, Ben. I only meant to borrow the money just until the Atlantic Queen could be built. I was going to pay it back, every cent, with interest. You'll be all right, sir. We'll take care of you. No, Bill. It's the end of me. And, and the dream. Oh, nonsense, Johnny. You'll be right as rain as soon as Doc Martin gets out here to have a look at you. The wind is rising, Ben. I mustn't fail. I must ride the wind. Johnny. Adam is a very sick boy, Ben. There's no point in hiding the truth. It's out of my hands. Doctor? What exactly does that mean? He'll reach a point of crisis tonight. If he passes it, all well and good. If not, stay close to him, Ben. I'll stop by in the morning. Thank you. Paul Horst and I will take turns sitting up with him. Yeah, Paul. Paul Adams, Adams going to pull through this all right. Don't you worry. Now. You going up and get some rest. We don't. I don't want you to be sick, too. Oh, you, you boys get, get to sleep. I'll sit up with them. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, my love. Message, Captain. It's good to be home. Aye, mister. It's always good to be home. Aye, Captain. But no sooner are you home, sir, than you can't wait to get back to sea again. Quite a philosopher, aren't you, mister? Well, I can recognize a man with salt water in his veins, sir. But I can't say the same for you. However, we managed to bring the wanderer home safely in spite of you. I'll tell the truth, Captain. I'm probably the best bait you've ever had. Huh? Aloft there! Reefing your main topsail! Wednesday. That's what kind of a master your father is, girl. Three days ahead of schedule we are. <laughs> Have you missed me? Missed you? I'd sooner miss a snaggletooth octopus. <laughs> you look tired. Was it a hard voyage? Aye. But we managed to keep our spirits up, eh, lad? Aye, sir. Hello, Elizabeth. It's good to see you, Ben Cartwright. It's good to see you. Your father invited me to supper. And a pig's eye. 
He invited himself. Well, either way, you're welcome, Ben. My stomach will be eternally grateful. Well, you two come along, and I'll see what I can do. <laughs> the night was as black as the inside of a whale. And I tell you, girl, we had ice floes around us as, as big as cathedrals. But we beat our way through them, didn't we, lad? Aye, sir. You have a real feeling for ice, Captain. He has a real feeling for the sea. He knows it, and it knows him. That's the only reason I put up with him. He's a bit of a tyrant, you know. Oh, I know that well. I remember listening to him address his men on the afterdeck as a little girl. Uh, I used to hide behind the mast. Now, my men, we are going on a long voyage. If we pull together, you will find me a clever fella. If we don't, you will find me a devil incarnate. That's all I've got to say, now get below. <laughs> it's exactly what he says today. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough about me. This was a marvelous meal. I haven't eaten this well since the last time I was here. Aye, she's a fair cook, like her mother was. Now, why don't you two youngsters go and see what the sunset is like? <laughs> Uh, this old seafarer's about talked himself out for one evening. I'll do the dishes later, Father. You won't catch me going near them. <laughs> <laughs> the world was all before them. Where to choose their place of rest. And Providence their guide. Do you remember that, Liz? Yes, Paradise Lost. It was summer, mm -hmm. and we were on a picnic, mm -hmm. and you read to me. I've thought of that picnic so many times. So many times. I, I brought a present for you. Oh, oh, Ben, how sweet. I bought it in Amsterdam. Oh, it's sweet. Oh, look at the faces of the cherubs. They're so, they're so round and pink. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I've never known a woman with face so fair and eyes Oh, man, I've waited, I've hoped. So that's what I get after 40 years, Halloran. We just can't take any more chances with valuable cargoes, Captain Stoddard. Chances? You blethering ingrate. I've sailed your ships around the horn in the teeth of a gale a dozen times, while men half my age were beating their way into a snug harbor. I'm sorry, Captain. The stockholders have voted to retire. There just isn't anything I can do about it. Yes. There is something you can do. You can tell your blasted stockholders I hope they choke on their valuable cargoes. Now, get out of here. Now, Mr. Halloran, how can you possibly think of retiring Captain Stoddard? Where would you find a man to replace him? We already have. The board wants to see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, Mr. Cartwright. Me? Yes. They have voted to turn over the command of the Wanderer to you. Tomorrow at 10. So that's how it is. Captain, I... I, I teach you everything you know. I treat you like a son. Father. Stay out of this girl. Captain, I... I knew nothing of any of this, sir. That's your story, mister. Sir, I, I don't want your command, sir. Why not? You're young and bright and ambitious, aren't you? That's what these shipping people are looking for. Captain, please, sir. Please listen to me. I'm listening to no more. I've done enough listening for this night. I'm going out. And when I come back, I don't want to see you in this house. How could they do it to him, Ben? How could they? Ben. 
Ben. He didn't mean what he said. He doesn't know what he's saying. Elizabeth? What about you? You don't think I could have... Oh, I love you, Ben. I want you. Nothing's changed. Give me another. Now, see here, Captain. You best be getting hold of yourself, or you'll be forcing me to call the police. Call him! Call him, you bug-eyed rum peddler. I'm a ship's master, I am. I deserve some respect. <laughs> it's all before I sail away. One morning in July, I met a maid who bade me stay. <laughs> Not on your life, said I. I've been looking for you, Captain. Who might you be, mister? I'm Ben Cartwright, sir. I've been sailing, mister. Sir. Sailing? It was stiff, no western. You know what they've done to me, mister? They've retired me. I gave them my hands and my soul for 40 years. They've stripped me. Stripped me bare. You're the best there is, sir. You'll get another ship. Not in New England, I won't. It's true I am. You can see it in their faces. Come along, sir. I'll take you home. Let go of me, boy. I know who you are. You're the young shark who drained me of all you could get. And then took my command away from me. Come along, Let sir. go of me. Get out of my sight before I break you in two. I'm getting drunk until all the world caves in on me. For it's all she was so very low. Now, you listen to me, and you listen hard. I don't want your command. I never wanted it. But maybe you should be retired. Maybe you haven't the guts for sailing anymore. I thought you could walk proud no matter what the storm. But look at you. Now, you get up on your feet, Captain. And you walk out of here like a sailing master, or I'll knock you down again. Sorry I hit him, Liz. I just have too much respect for him to allow him to show his insides to a bunch of swabs who aren't good enough to wipe his boots. Oh, Ben. What's he going to do? Get drunk every night? Try and drown away the fact that they don't want him anymore? He'll find himself. Where will he find himself? The sea is his home. This house is just a place to come back to. to... Liz. This had to happen sooner or later. Ben. What about us? How can I leave him now? Feeling alone? Unwanted, discarded, as he must feel. He'll need me. Well, well, we'll, we'll take him with us. Oh, ben, but he has no trade. He doesn't know anything but the sea. Well, you, you can't live your life for everybody else. Don't you understand? This is my father. I can't simply desert him. Don't you see that? You said nothing's changed. But nothing has. Not really. I think it has. I'll be at the inn. Go on. Walk out. I don't care what you do. I'm not getting on my knees to beg you to understand me.
with what I said. I didn't mean... Then don't say anything. I was coming to you. It took me all night to realize I had no right to force you into a decision like that. You had every right. No, Liz, I, I don't want us to live in guilt. I care about your father, too. He's been good to me, as good as any man could be. But you don't owe him anything. Yes, Liz, I do. I, I owe him. I owe him my respect for being the kind of man I admire. I have an idea I'd like to talk to him about now. He may not listen to me. He may throw me out of the house again, but at least I'd like to try. What is it, Ben? Well, I, I think it's something that, well, so that he, he can lead his life and we can lead ours. Miss West! Miss Coffee, Father. Suppose I ought to thank you for knocking me down. That isn't necessary, Captain. I will dispense with it. Man in his cups often makes a fool of himself. I've had that pleasure, sir. I raved quite a bit, didn't I? Well, as much as might be expected under the circumstances, sir. You spoke your own mind, too. With due respect, sir. You don't fight them, Father. So you should just forget them. There are other things in this life besides going to sea, you know. You're a sound man, Captain. You can start over again at something else. I've been 40 years on the deck of my own ship, mister. How'd you expect me to start something else at the twilight of my life? Captain, I'd like you to go into business with me. What kind of nonsense is this? Captain, I'm, I'm through with the sea, too. I have a dream, sir, to go west. Uh, it'll take a good deal of money. And until I can afford to go, I'm using what little money I have to go into business as a ship's chandler. I want you as a partner. A ship's chandler? Yes, sir. Captain Abel Morgan started a ship's chandler? I'd rather have me throat cut, sir. It's an honorable profession. Scrubbing floors is an honorable profession. I'm a man of the sea, mister. If I don't breathe salt spray for six months in the year, my lungs choke up. There's no more sailing for you, father, and you know it. What are you going to do? Sit here in this house day after day, feeling useless and miserable? That's no life for you. I don't want to see you end up like those men on the wharf with their dead dreams. This has nothing to do with you, girl. It has everything to do with me. Ben is willing to invest his money in you. The least you can do is give him a chance. I don't want to give him anything. I don't know why he wants to invest in me anyway. Because I have faith in you, Captain, in spite of your stubbornness and bad temper. <laughs> and because I'm in love with your daughter. You work fast, mister. I don't want anybody to come into my house and tell me how to run my life. I've no patience with being a merchant. I've no patience with aught but ships. Elizabeth, you're crying. Why, well, I haven't seen you cry since you were a little girl. And I go to sea. You're at sea now, Father. But without compass or chart, and without stars, you don't know where you're going. My girl, that's true. I'm sorry for it. But I couldn't be a shopkeeper. I haven't the head or the hands for it. Don't you see? Oh, try, Father. Please try. Do this one thing for me. No, for yourself. I don't want to pity you. Benjamin. Sir? Got a little money. I'll buy an equal partnership. Sir, will you... Will you also drink to our marriage? 
I... I think I can drink enough for both. Cease again. Darling, are you sure you're feeling all right? I feel marvelous, Ben. Right. I still don't think you should be working now. You can't lock me up. I'm not that sort of woman, you know that. Mm. Besides, we're doing so well. You need me. It's impossible to argue with women. But please do take care of yourself. Go in the back room and lie down and take a nap for an hour. I'm going to see about those new chronometers that just came in. You treat me like a child. Well, sometimes you act like a child. I love you, Liz. I love you. Now, do take care of yourself. You growl like a bear. <laughs> All right. All right. See you later, Otto. Benjamin. Yes, sir? You're going to the wharf? Oh, yes, I am, sir. Would you like to come along? There's a shipment of new chronometers and sextants coming in. Well, I suppose they're expensive, like that fancy new compass you bought us. Well, it was worth it, sir. That compass brought a lot of customers in. <laughs> well, there's a whole new crop of young seamen who appreciate new ideas in navigation. A whole new crop of young seamen. Well, that does it for you, Ben. I'll come around your place in the morning for the money. That'll be fine, thank you, Ethan. It'll be there. How's the captain holding up? Well, he does his job, but his mind, I'm afraid, is still at sea. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Mandeville. You must be doing pretty well. The way you're buying merchandise. Well enough, sir. You're an enterprising young man. I've got to give you credit. Trying to compete with me. Well, sir, we have less overhead, so we can afford to sell for less profit. <laughs> well, I'm not really worried about your competition, Mr. Cartwright. But remember, whenever you decide to give up that little flea market of yours, I might be able to interest you in some real opportunity. Thank you, sir. We'll make out. <laughs> Sea is whispering your name, Captain. If you stand on the wharf, you can hear it. Aye. There are some men who are born for a certain sort of life. If they leave it, desert it, they die. I hear those whispers in my sleep, in my soul. But do you care? Do you really care? Eight months is a long time, Captain. A compromise for living is no living at all. I'll see you again, mister. I believe you. I hear you've been up and down the coast looking for another command. I want to help you. How can you help me? By giving you a chance to buy a share of the ship. A kind of ship. What difference does it make? She'll be seaworthy. She'll have her own crew. And you'll be her master. I don't work for a man like you, Mandible. Then you work for no man. What's it you want me to command, a slaver? I want you for better things. I want you to own a share of your own ship. <laughs> so I can drive my short-handed, ill-fed crew to a drop. I know what kind of business you run, Mandible, and I want no part of it, you hear? No part of it. 
You're a dead man, Captain. As dead as the whispers of your name on the sea. Well, hello, Captain. How's the mercantile business these days? On your way, mister. Well, he says it's good, mates. Hey, <laughs> there'll always be a sailor to buy a few doodads now and then, don't you know? <laughs> when are you going to start selling ribbons, Captain? <laughs> laugh, you jackasses. Go ahead and laugh. I'll be master of my own ship again. Strike me dead if I... <laughs> A ship mandible. Would you like some coffee, Captain? I want my money, Benjamin. You what? My money. Money I put into the business. And any profits that are coming to me. Well. Why do you want the money, Captain? Why do you want to pull out? I don't have to explain to you, mister. Captain, you're my partner. You have to explain everything to me. I, you come in here and you, you want to break an agreement. Now I want to know why. You going to give me my share or not? Well, I, I can't give it to you. I, I need all the cash on hand to pay Bell for those chronometers when he comes to collect tomorrow. Raises with the chronometers. I want my money, man. Now look, Captain. You, you go and get a good night's rest, and we'll talk about this in the morning. We'll talk about it now. Oh, sir, you, you're in no condition to talk. No. You won't give me my money. No, sir. I will not. Nothing. Just a kick, I suppose. Really? <laughs> I told you, you shouldn't be working now. Oh, Ben. Sweet Ben, you're such a warrior. told you. Go on and say it. Say what? What you're thinking. Does it matter? I don't care what you think. My money and I took it. Very simple. A simple explanation, eh? I wish I could understand it. What difference does it make? What difference? The difference between faithlessness and trust, the difference between selfishness and sacrifice. Don't and... reprimand me, mister. 
I don't need your schoolmaster's lectures. Now just what do you need, Captain Stoddard? I know what you want, mister. You want this old man out of the way. No, no, sir, that's not true. But Elizabeth and I do want a life together. I'm trying to give you a life. That's why I took the money. So that I could go back to sea where I belong. I'm tired of seeing those faces laughing at me. How could you? You make me ashamed to be your daughter. Elizabeth. Why did you come here? You kept me from the sea, making a shopkeeper of me. Now you turn my own flesh against me. Captain. Dad. Elizabeth. Dad. Elizabeth. Don't just stand there. Get Dr. Byram. Hurry. Don't judge him too harshly, Ben. No, darling, I, I won't. He's covered with barnacles, like an old ship. He's struggling to keep afloat. I know, darling. You, you mustn't talk. Mm -hmm. I want to. Just for a minute. Oh, my face is so warm. Our child will be strong, Ben. At this moment, I'm concerned only about you. Oh, don't growl, my darling. The doctor said we'll both be fine. Oh, Ben. I can't wait to see our son. How do you know it's going to be a boy? A man like you? You'd have to have sons. Tall sons. Like the trees that will surround. Hmm. Liz, you must rest. Oh, don't go away, Ben. Read to me just for a little while. Same thing. Something wrong, Captain? There's a lot that's wrong. It's a confused world. It's not the world that's confused. Can I buy you a drink, Captain? No, you bought me enough. Then why don't you just say what's on your mind? I'm not commanding any ship for you. That's where you're wrong. This paper says I own you for a term of six months. Nobody owns me. You were wrong, Mr. Mandible. The sea doesn't whisper my name anymore. I listened, and I couldn't hear it. I'm through with the sea for good and always. Not quite, sir. Your last voyage has not yet begun. I'm not commanding any slave ship for you, mister. If I'm through, I'm going to be through with dignity. Dignity? What dignity do you have? You'll be on that dock tomorrow morning. Give me that paper, mister. Get out of here, you old drunk. Don't you ever lay a hand on Mr. Mandible. I have my dignity to uphold, too, Captain Stoddard. 
You have your chin and whiskers on that ship tomorrow morning. Bright and early, understand? Of this frail world, by which the spirits perverse with easy intercourse pass to and fro to tempt to punish mortals, except whom God and good angels guard by special grace. Ben. Do you think I'm one of those mortals that God and good angels will protect? You of all people. Then I will surely go to heaven when I die. Why, were you worried? Ben, look at that cloud. It's shaped just like an elephant. <laughs> you are a child. You know, I remember when I first met you, I thought you were a woman. Mrs. Callahan taking good care of you? Oh, yes, she's a dear. She waits on me hand and foot. Go on reading, Ben. I love the sound of your voice. It's so friendly and reassuring. Like a lighthouse horn at night. A lighthouse horn. Um... Mm. On my experience, Adam, freely taste and fear I've of... made up my mind. What? That's what it shall be. What? Our baby's name, Adam. Adam. Adam? Adam! <laughs> Adam. I like it. I love you, Ben. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, my love, I adore you. I didn't know what to do. He has a paper, he says, that gives him the right of ownership to the shop. Who says? Mandible. I didn't want to leave the shop, but I didn't know what to do. Oh, no, wait here till we get back. What the devil are you doing here? Looking over my interests. Well, since when are your interests in a cabinet of my office? Tell him, Von Mayer. My client has obtained a writ. Never mind. I'll explain. Your partner signed a paper which was a promise of payment for part ownership in a schooner of mine. Yes, I'm aware of that. He was to assume command of that schooner. He didn't show up. That, sir, is a breach of contract. Well, maybe so. But he didn't ask for his money back. That should satisfy any claim for his services. What money? I never received any money. I paid you. You have a receipt, Captain. Receipt? I... I don't need any receipt. Oh, I'm afraid you do, Captain. Now, look, Mandeville. He left this office with the money. I know that. Well, perhaps he lost it. Or spent it on rum. I don't know. I only know I never saw it. Why, you thieving scum! Captain, I Captain. know I paid you! Now, look, Mandeville. I know exactly what you're doing. I can't prove anything. I'm not even going to try. I'll pay you every last set the captain owes you. You have the money, of course. I'll need a little time to raise it. I'm afraid I have no time to give you. However, if you were to assume command of the schooner, as agreed, I would be willing to forget the whole thing. I'll not command a dinghy for you, mister. Then get them out of here, Blackner. They're on my property. Let's go, Curry. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. Get them out of here, Blackner. Henderson! You're on your way out! Get it! that money tomorrow. I'm going to give it to you. 
Then you're going to forget this whole thing. You understand? Yes. Yes, I understand perfectly. Get out. Get out! Get out! All right, son. Yeah, I think so. You need fixing up. Come into the office. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! Please, you'd better come. The baby is coming. Please hurry. Fine boy, Mr. Cartwright. I'll be at home if you need me. Good night, Captain Scott. Did you see your son, Adam? Yes, darling. Uh, you must rest. Adam. Oh, how sweet his face looks. Like the cherubs on my music box. Play it for me, babe. Are you proud of your son? Yes, darling. Very proud. He'll make a fine-looking man. Like you. Hold my hand, Ben. I'm holding it. You're so pale. You must have been worried about me. Oh, there was no pain, my darling. Oh, just a little now and then. But my thoughts went flying. I was warm all over. I was riding that cloud. The one that looks like an elephant. So high that the sun scorched my dress. But then it began to rain. Cool, sweet drops. They ran down my cheeks and into the corners of my mouth. Elizabeth, mm. I love you so much. Um. And you're crying. No, no, I'm not. Where's father? I'm here, child. Do you like your grandson? Aye. He's a fine boy. Ben, I want you to promise me something. I want you to promise me that no matter what happens, you'll go after your dream. Darling, we'll both go after my dream. Promise. I promise. Is there smoke in here? My throat feels so dry. Read to me, Ben. That last part that I love so much. The world was all before them. 
where to choose their place of rest, and providence their guide. They, hand in hand, with wandering steps and slow, through Eden took the solitary way. Music box. This is a real thrill for me, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> the West, where well, it's practically half across the world. And me, I've never been out of New England before. Me, I've never even been on a train. He'll take care of you, Mrs. Callahan. Come on, Adam. Give your old grandfather a farewell smile. I don't like taking him away from you, Captain. You made a promise, son. I want you to keep it. You sure you'll be all right, Captain? Aye. I'm beginning to enjoy the peaceful life of a businessman. You gotta miss her, you old sea devil. Like you'd miss a snaggletooth octopus, I wager. Don't brood, son. Keep a warm spot in your heart for her. Don't carry her on your shoulder for the rest of your life. She wouldn't want that. No. I suppose she wouldn't. I'll keep a warm place in my heart for you too, sir. Aye. Do that. Goodbye, son. Godspeed. Bye, Otto. Go on, get on with you. <laughs> You'll have me blubbering like my young grandson. Driver. too. All kind of mixed up in a, a dream. I was on this clipper ship sailing in a dark and black sea and all of a sudden the sun came up. I guess it was from all those stories you used to tell me when I was a boy, huh? Memories and dreams are precious things, Adam. They're always there when you need them most. How is he, Pa? He's gonna be all right. Howdy, Adam. Welcome home. Get back! 
Sam Hill comes home. Not a sound. Hey, Pa, you think all those stories we hear about Sam are true? No. Never heard for sure they weren't. Well, if they ain't, somebody's got an awful lot of explaining to do to me. For example, that, that tree up there, now, what, what do you call it? A uh, candle nut tree. Yeah, yeah. Now, how does that candle nut tree grow up there all by itself when the only other place in the whole world it grows is in the tropics? Now, how come? Well, Sam says there's a lot of warmth in that ground. a little early this year, aren't you, Sam? Sergeant Hathaway says he heard you coming. What are you doing here, Tyson? Colonel Tyson, sir, if you please. What do you want? Don't suppose you've changed your mind about selling me this land? That's pretty good supposing. Just as stubborn as she was. But not near as polite. Now, you ride off this land and you take your private army with you. You're a fool, Sam. You only visit this place once a year. It's a waste of good pasture land. Pasture land? Is that all it means to you? Rachel's dead. I want this land. Only the land. My mother wouldn't have you when she was alive. You're not going to get her now. Perhaps the real owner of this land will have something to say about that. You're talking to the real owner. I'm talking to his son. Well, my father's dead. Not so dead that he can't write letters. John Henry Hill. Isn't that his name? That was his name. Well, John Henry Hill's arriving in Virginia City tomorrow. Like Lazarus rising from the grave. You going to have the courage to meet him?
Well, my mother told me he died. When I was 12 years old, she got a letter from a shipmate of his. Said he'd been washed overboard in a storm in the South Seas, someplace in the, in the Macassar Straits. Hey, well, now, look, I, I didn't say it was. No, 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 we got a bet. Come on. All right. Hey, Sam, tell little Joe about the time you pulled that 20 mule team going up Geiger Pass. Tell him. And hey, now, what about it, Sam? Is that the truth or not? Well, little Joe, it wasn't really a 20 mule team. There wasn't more than half a dozen. And those mules weren't really pulling. Yeah, see, what did I tell you? You talking to Sam Hill. Oh, Sam, Sam, don't do that now. We got a bed waiting for you inside. Well, thanks, Ben. It's going on 18 years since I slept under a roof. Besides, I, I want to finish this up so I can go to Virginia City tomorrow. Well, I'm for bed. You come on, boys? No, we'll hang around here for a while, Paul. Yeah, we want to jaw with Sam for a little bit. Good night. Good night, Sam. Good night, Good night Paul. Man. Good night, Paul. Hey, Sam, I guess you're pretty happy about seeing your pa after all these years. Yeah, sure am. Okay, Oz, come on out here. Hey, Sam. How'd you make him do that? Well, I asked him to. He knows what I want. Sure, he remembers me from last year. We got to be real good friends. Sam, I raised that horse from just a colt. He don't remember nothing from day to day except where the oat bin's at. That seems to me like he's a real smart animal. Also, will you hand me that hammer? What you doing up? Same thing you are. He's been at it all night. Yeah. He's sun up in about an hour. He hasn't stopped once. Joe. Mm hmm Maybe he ain't got sleep. up in the mountains, I heard some trappers talking about a man that never had to sleep. You reckon he could have been talking about Sam Hill? Sleepwalking. The way he loves horses. Loves to be near him, work around him. Well, I guess every man has his own way of dealing with worry. Maybe Sam just to work his away. Worry? Well, Paul, what in the tarnation could Sam Hill have to worry about? I think he's afraid to meet his father. Now, why would a man be afraid to meet his own father? I think how you'd feel if, uh, if someone you hadn't seen well, since you were a baby, someone you'd given up for dead, suddenly would have walked in one day and announced to you that he was your father. <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing. If he wasn't you, he'd get the dang to throw it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Come on, boys. I, I don't know about Sam Hill, but we've got to get some sleep or we won't get any work done tomorrow. story I heard up in the mountains from them trappers was true. Sam? See? Ain't you even a little bit sleepy? There are ways of resting the brain without closing the eyes, little Joe. Yeah, but what about the body? The brain takes care of the body, huh? Ain't you learned that yet? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see you over the silver dollar, Sam. In a bit. to go in with you or anything? No, thanks. Uh, something I got to do alone. That burn Joe, sometimes that man does confound me. Mm -hmm. Now, just then he acted like just a plain, ordinary, flesh and blood human being. Yeah. Sometimes he don't. Room 22, the bridal suite. The what? Mr. Hill insisted on the best, right up the stairs. Thank you. Mr. Hill? Mr. Hill? Give us a couple down there. Well, it's a little I really like you, and that's the truth. I declare if that ain't just about the sweetest thing I've ever had said to me. You don't hardly hear that kind of talk no more. Oh, honey, I'm just getting tuned up. Well, I get the whole band playing. Uh, but let's don't let ourselves get too serious right off. You know, you know what I mean. Well, no, honey, I don't know what you mean. Well, I am a year or two older than you are. Oh, well, honey, what's that got to do with it? To do with what? Uh, to do with what we were talking about. And what was that, little Joe? Honey, sir, hmm? Well, you know what I You just heard the school bell, sonny. Don't want to be late, do you? Excuse me, ma'am. You bear a striking resemblance to a woman I met on my travels through the Orient. Balinese princess she was. Are you sure you don't have royal blood in your veins? Well, I don't hardly think so. I'm from Texas. Now, look, mister, I'd hey, like... Sonny, would you get us another glass, please? Oh, yes, sir. 
Yes, sir, the similarity is remarkable. However, this lady was somewhat smaller than you. As a matter of fact, she only stood about three feet tall. You wouldn't think a little woman like that could make a man happy. This little girl would fool you. Yeah, well, you know, there's a few things <laughs> I'd like to say to the lady. You're getting to be an awful pest. Now run along. Do as I tell you, run along. You know, old man, I'm losing my patience. Say, defend yourself. What? Put up your dukes, fight. Or ain't you got any sand left in your crawl? <laughs> Come on, old man, I can't fight you. I'd advise against it, but you started this. Now what are you gonna do? You nut. <laughs> now, let's see, where was I? Boy, it distracted me. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I just walked into Africa. They came out with a diamond big as a camel's eye. Hey, give me a beer, will you, Percy? Looks like he's going to beat your time, little brother. <laughs> Did you get a load of that old goat saying he wanted to fight me? I him once, I'd break him in two. Another bottle of champagne, innkeeper. Hey, Sonny, you wouldn't have an extra $5 in your wallet, would you? I wouldn't have an extra what? I find myself temporarily short of funds. I'd like to buy the young lady another drink. Oh, and you'd like me to pay for it, huh? I've just come to town. You're the only friend I got. Wait a minute, old timer. Who's going to pay for this one? Uh, I'll pay for it first thing in the morning. Put it on my bill. Oh, no! You're not a very good judge of character, my man. I'm coming into a sum of money. Give me back that bottle. Oh, I'm left. Finish it. All right, old timer. That's the way you want it. Oh, oh. Sam, did you find your fall? Sleep in the deep. Dream sinning ways in other days. I think I just did. Mr. Hill? Come on, Mr. Hill. We're going home. trying to do, split my skull. Every time a fella ain't feeling good, always somebody making noise. Hey, where am I? What have you done with me? Huh. Kidnapping, huh? Shanghai again. If you think I'm serving in this prairie schooner, you got another thing coming. I'll starve first. Let me tell you this, you'll never get away with it, mister. There's a law against sneaking up on a man when he's had a few drinks and carting him off the middle of nowhere. And I'll tell you what...
must be my son, Sam. When did she die? 18 years ago. That long? Now, what happened? I never did find out. Some folks say Indians, some say lightning. Nobody knows for sure. I seen the smoke from a ways off, but by the time I got here, everything was all over. I buried her myself under the candlenut tree. Just you? Mm -hmm. How old were you at the time? I was 14. The scent of that tree. I know. It's almost a joke. Never thought it'd grow here. Yeah, well, she had a way of making things grow. If you are any samples, you sure did. Why didn't you ever come back to her? Cause of no account, I guess. That ain't much of an excuse. That's the only one I got. I loved your ma, Sam, a lot, an awful lot. But I got it into my head that there was a pot of gold waiting for me somewhere at the end of a rainbow. I just keep looking hard enough for it. Still looking. Did you come back to see her or to claim the land? This place? Mm -hmm. It's not mine. It's yours now. Rachel's. There was some talk around here that you come to sell it. Oh, I did get a letter from some fella hereabouts. Said he was interested in it. I couldn't sell this place. This is hallowed ground. I'm glad you feel that way about it. I mean, about not selling the place. Not for all the money in the world. That's good. I should have known. Now, there's just one thing that still uh, kind of puzzles me. What would that be, Sam? Well, it's been a long time since we last seen each other, and uh, I don't know exactly what to call you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Most people call me John Henry or J.H. We even known some to call me seldom sober. Doesn't make any difference, whichever one suits you. Yeah, well, I'd like to call you Pa. Sure, Sam. That'd be fine. You sure you want to? I want to. Had a little time to spruce up before we met. <laughs> I bet you could use a hot bath, huh? Yeah, sure could. Didn't know I was standing on the windward side of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some good solid food for change, huh? Never sounds good, Sam. Well, then come on. I ain't dressed fitting to meet proper folk. No, now don't you mind. I got some friends nearby that they don't care how a man dresses. You sure they won't object to a couple extra miles for dinner? Mind, wait till we get to the Ponderosa. You're gonna see a feed like you ain't never seen in your life. Now, don't you be too sure. I remember once down the Fiji Islands, I was guest of honor at this wedding feast. It lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I ate so much roast pig and stuffed hummingbird well, tongues. Well, and come on, Pa. You can tell me on the way in the wagon. Come on. Straight and stop asking so many questions. Well, now that you're back, Mr. Hill, what are your plans? You think you're gonna stay? Oh, I reckon that's up to Sam here. I guess we can figure out something. You ever shot a horse? Shot a horse, never even pointed a gun at one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, close that door. Where are you raised? In a barn? Oh, you, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> 
Who's this? Well, this is my youngest son, Joseph. What do you do, raise him in litters around here? <laughs> I'd over to shake hands with you some, but I'd just give you a fistful of this sheep dip. Ah, uh, that's all right. I think we've met. That's strange. I don't recollect seeing your face before. A silver dollar. Silver what? A silver dollar. That's a saloon in Virginia City. Oh, yeah, in Virginia City. You know, I don't remember a thing that happened in Virginia City. Did I say or do anything? If, if I borrowed any money off of you, you don't need to worry. I'll pay it back. You can forget it, Mr. Hill. Little Joe wasn't about to loan you no money. You there too, hoss? Beginning to end. <laughs> you think I was drinking yesterday? You should have been with me in St. Petersburg. This Russian Cossack captain, he, he bet me I couldn't drink a helmet full of vodka. It's one of them big helmets with, with a big spike on the top of it. Uh, I thought that was the kind that was only worn by uh, German officers. George, you're right. Come think of it, this fella did speak Russian with a German accent. Must have been a spy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, anyway. Shut your mouth, Pa. Uh, what? You get it full of water. <laughs> well. Now, that makes it official. You are the legal owner of the property. Duly recorded and filed. Thank you, Mr. Willis. You've been very helpful. Any time, Colonel. Good day, sir. Kind of late. Folks around here get used to getting up with the sun. Oh, Sam, don't let that worry. We can all afford to sleep in a little tomorrow. No, no, Sam's right. We better go. You boys can hear me shoot off my mouth anytime. Mr. Hill, there's one story you got to tell. Now, what story was that, horse? It's about that tree you gave Sam's mall. What, what was the name of it? Uh, the uh, the cantaloupe tree. Yeah, the cantaloupe tree. You'd be surprised how many folks come up here year after year from miles around just to look at that tree sitting up there on the hill, blooming the year around. If you think that's something, you should hear what happened to me in Mozambique. There was this uh, coconut palm, about 200 feet tall. 200 feet? Well, give or take an inch or two, son. Uh, Mr. Hill, I really don't think you understand about the cantaloupe tree. You see, with the kind of weather we have out here, that, that tree should have died more times than we can count. Uh, what with the rain and frost, sleet, snow. We get maybe 40 feet of snow up here in the Sierra. But up on that hill, up on that hill, the grass is green the year round. That candle nut tree just seems to get taller and prettier all the time. Seems like nothing in the world can stop it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty wonderful. <laughs> Let me finish telling you about these big coconut trees. Hello. Seems we have visitors. Tyson, may I come in, sir? Mr. Hill, you completed your part of the bargain. I'm completing mine. Here's your money. I don't know what you're talking about. You know well enough. Tyson, I don't know what you're up to, but if this is another one of your tricks.
Uh, Mr. Tyson, I think it might be better if you were to leave now. It must be some kind of mistake, Colonel. This ain't my money. I'll be happy to leave now that my business transaction is over. And that money, Mr. Hill, is full payment for the land you deeded over to me last night. Good evening, sir. You're lying. He didn't sell you anything. Didn't he? Why don't you check the territorial land office? You'll find there's a fully documented, signed and witnessed deed. And one more thing. Don't you ever set foot on that land again. Sam, I didn't do it. I just want the truth. I'm telling the truth. Well, I wouldn't do a thing like that. How can you be so sure? You were so drunk, you couldn't remember little Joe, you couldn't remember Hoss. What's the last thing you do remember? I don't know. I, I couldn't do a thing like this. Could I? Oh, man, did you come back here after all these years just to sell my mother's grave? Now, hold on, Sam. All we've got to go on so far is Tyson's word. Now, we'll ride into the land office and see for ourselves. You can do that if you want to, Ben. I'm going home. Nobody's taking that land away from me. Hoss, Joe, we're going to Virginia City. Adam, you'll have to take care of that timber transaction with Mr. Richards in the morning. Mr. Hill, you'd better come along with us. Yes, sir. Willis, it was filed today. Well, that don't make it any easier to find. There are certain ways to cross-file these transactions. That's the way it's done. Oh, here it is. Now, this document here by... That. I didn't sign it, did I? Did I, Mr. Cartwright? sign it. I couldn't have. Yeah. Write your signature. What? What do you say? I said write your signature. Oh, sure. Sure, Mr. Carter. I signed that paper. I signed that paper, Mr. Cartwright. I don't remember doing it, but... I know I did. How am I going to face my boy? How? I don't know. Well, now. 
now that that's settled, can I go back? Nothing to is settled. Horse, go find the sheriff. We'll ride out and make sure that Tyson doesn't set foot on Sam's land until we can prove that this paper isn't worth the, the paper it's written on. You coming? Oh, I don't guess I will. Better be moving on. Mr. Hill, I can tell you what to do, but I will tell you this. If you don't face up to Sam, you'll be doing as much harm to him as to yourself. I know it, Mr. Cartwright. I know it. A man like you can do it. Sam can do it. I just can't. I don't know why. I just can't. You ride on back to the Ponderosa with Joan. Us and I will go with the sheriff. Tell Sam. Thank you, Mr. Curry. you off this land. Are you going? Or do I have to throw you off? All right, sir, you give me no choice. Yes, help! Throw him off my land. Do you hear? That's an order. You're just like she was. Stubborn, independent, refusing to bend to my will. Just like her, Tyson. Colonel, do you hear? You call me Colonel Tyson. You're no Colonel, you're a fake. Like that hired army of yours. How could you expect my mother to even look at you? You're not even a man. Hill? You're just a shell filling an empty uniform. I don't want to kill you. I didn't want to kill her. What's happening? The earth's moving. What's causing it? That's what makes that tree grow where it shouldn't. Where everybody said it didn't have a chance. That's what keeps the snow off my mother's grave, even in the deep of winter. And that, Tyson, is what will keep you from ever taking this place. I, I didn't. I didn't. She wasn't supposed to be in the house. I never wanted to kill anyone. Ever. Why? Why did you do it? I did it for her. I wanted her. Don't you see? With the house gone, she would have had to come to me. Not ever. You know that. Oh, yes, she would have. Not for me, perhaps, but for you. So you'd have a home. It was always you she was thinking of. And I wanted her. But... It was an accident she was in the house. It, it, it was an accident. No. Please, don't, don't kill me.
Sam. Sam, we heard. Don't know what to say. There's nothing to say, Ben. Paul. It's, it's hard to believe. Ball writes it. That hot spring ought to washed away that hillside a long time ago. Yeah. I guess that spring just wanted to stay underground and keep that earth warm. Yeah, I reckon so. It'll take a heap of legal doing to straighten this mess out in the books, but I'll guarantee you that nobody will ever take this piece of property away from Sam. I guess when the story of what happened here tonight gets around, nobody's ever going to try. Come on, Tyson. I don't suppose he'll ever be able to tell you himself. But your father really didn't know what he'd done. I know, Ben. I know. Thank you, Ben. Bye, Sam. See you next spring, Sam. We'll be listening for you this time, Sam. Yeah, this time we'll know what you're coming. Well, so long, boys. Well, old man, you coming? You mean a can? You mean a can, Sam? I've got my choice. You're my pa, ain't you? I'm stuck with you. Somebody's got to take care of this. Chuck! Care of Maybe you ain't heard about my travel. No, but I got a feeling I'm going to. <laughs> you know, we got to stop that hotel there in Virginia City. A little matter of a bill I got to pay. And uh, I want to pick up my stuff, too. Oh, if you think I'm going to load down this wagon with all that junk. Eh, well, I guess it don't amount to much. There's one thing I want to get, though. I ain't never been without your ma's picture. We'll get it, Pa. Yeah. I'm tired of honky-tonk women. I'm tired of traveling around. I'm tired of Susie and Curly and Kate. I'm thinking of settling down. Give me a girl who'll be kind to my dog and teach my kids how to pray. John Henry! Come on, Jackass! Oh, man, who is this? We don't really know. Call him Billy Joe. John Henry, I must have walked a thousand miles following you. How come you ran off and left me way back in Carson City? Yeah, I know there's something I forgot. He's been tailing me ever since he was six or seven years old, I reckon. My ma told me, never let you out of my sight. But sure is a hard job keeping up with you. Yeah, see exactly which one was your ma, Billy Joe. He ain't done amount to much, but I can't seem to shake him. He can play that guitar, and he makes up the prettiest songs you ever heard. All right, get on, boy. We got a lot of iron to pound between now and spring. Hoss, will you tie that thing on the end of the wagon? Yeah. Come on, boy. I'll tell you just what my son here done. Uh. You see, there is here, enemy colonel. He had an army of about 7,000 men. They come a charging up this hill with this couple of calaveras. Get out! Right, Sam, all he had was a hammer. He started swinging that hammer, and them fellas started dropping like ten pins. Bullets were rattling off his chest like popcorn out of a skillet. Sam Hill's going on. Sam Hill? Yeah, oh. yeah, Paul. We're just telling him goodbye.
What happened to you? Well, I was all at once struck down. My heart and... Oh! <laughs> I'm hurt something fierce. Well, you take it easy, I'll get you to a doctor. Oh, I ain't gonna last long enough for no doctor to give me my money's worth. Just get me back to my camp. All right. Why don't you show me where your camp is? Give me your handkerchief. Come on, you ain't helpless. Well, I, what are you? What are you gonna do with it? Take care of him. It's gonna be a lot of trouble to you. Poor Lauren thing. Well, Trudy, something like this happens every lamb in time. I tell you what. Come fall, you fatten him up real good. I'll build a big fire, and we'll roast him. Paul! Oh, don't you dusty think of such a thing. Come <laughs> oh, oh. Now, Trudy, I was just funny. Was just funny? I'll get you good if you ain't. Grandpa. Grandpa. What did you do to him? I found him this way on the trail. Oh. Uh, he helped me, Trudy. Give me a hand, we'll let him off the horse. Let's lie him down. Yeah. Here we go, Pop. Take it easy. Does the name Harker mean anything to you, girl? No, Grandpa, it don't. There's a rich family in San Francisco named Harker. Yeah, they're the ones I'm talking about. They're your folks, Trudy, just as much as I am. How could that be? I, I ain't never even heard of him. Your father was Frank Harter, a fine, upstanding man. Grandpa, why didn't you tell me all this before? It wasn't easy to tell. You see, your mother met young Frank Harker in San Francisco. They fell in love. But the Harkers was high and mighty. They wasn't gonna have no Hill girl by the name of Abigail Coombs and their family. No, sir. So, Frank and Abigail, they run away and got married. What happened to them? One day, Abigail came here with you. She told me that Frank had up and died. And she come to me because she had no place else to turn. She made me make a promise before she died. What kind of promise? She made me promise that I'd try to get you back to the Harkers and the things that were rightfully yours. I've been happy here, Grandpa. Seth, I'll take care of her. You know that. You don't have to worry about it. Now, you stay out of this, you hear? I didn't raise her to marry no sheep herder. I want you to go to your rightful people, Trudy. Make them take you back. I don't want to leave here, Grandpa. I'm asking you for your promise, Trudy. Now, will you do as I ask? I'll try, Grandpa. And I'll need yours, too, son. You have my word. Now I can rest easy. He's gone. I put the ground sheet on for you just in case it comes up a rain or something. 
Well, don't seem likely. Well, you can't never tell about those things. I'll put some bread and meat in there for, for you, too, if you get hungry. Thank you, Paul. You look after that lamb now. Oh, I will. Don't you worry about that. Just don't you get to liking it down there too much. Well, you know I could never like anything but what's right here. Paul, I'm afeard. Truth. I I'm all trembly inside. I I've never done nothing like this before. Well, I don't like it neither. I don't like your Grandpa sending you off to people you don't know and strangers taking care of you. I ought to be the ones taking care of you, Trudy. Thank you very kindly, Paul, but you ain't no kin of mine. You, you don't need to. Well, I want to. You know I got a strong feeling for you. Why, well, I didn't know nothing of the sort. You never spoke of it. Well, there, there are things that uh, just don't speak right out. How's a girl to know lest you tell her? Well, you know now. You, 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 I got all kinds of things planned for us I want to tell you about. Paul. Paul, I want to hear about them things. I want to hear about all of them. There just ain't no time now. I got to go and do what Grandpa made me promise. Yeah, I guess you do. Well, you go on, then. Don't worry about things. I'll watch over everything around here for you. Thank you, Paul. And don't you fuss none, because I'll be back. I'm hoping you will, Trudy. You know I will. Sure. Sure, I know you will. You better get started. Uh, well, uh, the sooner I, I get going, the sooner I'll be back. You take care of her now, you hear, Cartwright? Don't you worry, I'll take good care of her. Because I don't want anything to happen to her. I'll be back before you know it. Yes, it is. <laughs> Come on, I'll take you upstairs to your room. Yeah, this is your room right here. <gasps> Whoa, look at it. Is this whole place just for me? Yeah, the whole place just for you. Oh, wee. Just walk around and get acquainted. <gasps> I I'm going to go downstairs and, uh, and heat up a couple of buckets of water. You could kind of wa wash up a little bit before my family gets here, kind of pretty up. Is it going to be all right with him? I mean, me staying here? Oh, yeah, yeah. My, my pa loves company. You leave that to me. Uh, you need anything, just call me. I'll be downstairs. Yeah. Oh, little Joe. You've been real good to me. Just make yourself at home. Whose horse is that outside? A uh, horse? Oh! That um, just belongs to a friend of mine, came back with me. No. Girl. Huh? Where is she? Oh, well. She, she, she's upstairs. Oh? Huh? 
I should go, go take a bath. Oh. Well, see, you don't, you don't understand, Pa. No, you're right. I don't understand. I suppose you start explaining. Explain. No, her, her name's Trudy. Yes? And, uh, she's a fine, sweet girl. Good. She's gonna take a bath and stay with us for a while. She's gonna stay with us? Oh, yeah, but j j just overnight. I mean, she, she wouldn't be any trouble at all. I, I, I don't think she'd be any trouble at all. Good. Do you, do you think? I suppose I should meet him. No trouble at all. What, what, what happened? It's not to me, dear little Shh. Joe. I fell clean over. Are you all right? Well, I reckon, but you ought to warn a buddy about them things. They ain't safe. What, what, what happened in the chair? It's broke. No, oh, it's broke. Don't, don't say anything. Trudy, I'd like you to meet my father. Pa, this is... Howdy, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> well, Miss Coombs, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, my name's Harker now, I guess, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, at least I think so. Oh, well, from what little Joe told me, I... Well, it's, it's just that so much has been happening to me today, I'm not sure about anything. Except that you folks are being right nice to, to go to all this trouble for me. Uh, it's no trouble, is it, Pa? Oh, no, no, of course, no trouble at all. Uh, Trudy, we're going to be fixing supper pretty soon, and... We're going to wash up, and I thought maybe you'd like to wash up. Yeah, well, I, oh, I was just yeah. bringing her the water when you came in, Pa. Oh, oh, never mind, little Joe. I can tell you. Oh, and don't you worry none about that, that tippy old chair, little Joe. It ain't broke much. I'll fix it myself first thing in the morning. It ain't broke much. <laughs> Joe... That girl wouldn't be safe in Virginia City by herself. You can't send her to San Francisco. Well, why not? Her grandfather wanted me to. No, no, no. You said that he wanted you to look after her. Well, she has family in San Francisco. They can look after her. Joe, suppose by chance she happens to find this family of hers, what, the Harkers? Yeah, Harkers. And suppose they don't take her in. And then what does she do? You know, a couple of hundred miles away from anybody she knows. Why wouldn't they want to take her in? She, she's part of the family. Joseph, you just told me Mr. Harker turned away her mother 20 years ago. Yeah, that's right. I guess we don't have a guarantee he'll take her in, do we? You really got yourself into something, didn't you? Evening, Pa. Evening. I was wondering when you boys would get back. Hoss, what did the doctor say about your arm? Oh, it's all right, boy. He said I'd have full use of it in another week or two. Oh, good. Uh, listen. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about something. Yeah, we, we know all about it, Paul. We met little Joe going into town a while ago. Oh, yeah. that's our little brother. Goes out looking for a bear and brings back a girl. Yeah. Yeah. I hear them Harkers are pretty fancy folk there in San Francisco. We think we ought to dress or something before we meet this little gal? Well, I don't think that will be necessary. This particular little gal wasn't brought up in San Francisco society. 
Well, uh, Joe didn't give us any details. He just said he was wiring the people. Uh, what's the story? Well, there's this old man Coombs up in the mountains. Trudy, come on down. I want you to meet my other two sons. Miss Trudy Harker, my son Adam. Howdy, Adam. How you doing? And my son Horse. Howdy. Howdy, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, you sure raised some fine ones. How'd you get them so big? Uh, I guess it's the double helpings they're always eating. Uh, well, uh, Trudy, how about some uh, dinner? Uh, Joe went to Virginia City to send a telegram to your grandfather, but uh, I think among the four of us, we ought to be able to rustle up something. Oh, no, 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 I'll do oh, it. Oh, no, no, but Trudy, No, it? sir, cooking is a woman's job. I'll go see what's out there. If you got some, I'll fix you up some hogback and turnips. It'll only take a short while. Hogback and turnips. That don't sound bad at all, does it? You know, I think that girl's gonna have a little trouble in San Francisco. Yeah, I think our work is cut out for us. What, what sort of work, Paul? Making a young lady out of a mountain girl. You look like you made up pretty well. Yeah, pretty good. Set that telegram off. Yeah. And I persuaded Mrs. Wilson to open up the store. Did you buy all them packages of clothes for Trudy? Yep. Wasn't an easy job either. Uh, tell me something. How'd you pick out the sizes? I just got Maisie from the saloon to come down and try things on for me. She's about the same size. I'll be dead, Burr. Well, little brother, gotta hand it to you. When it comes to women, you're the real expert in the family. Well, I just hope you're right. Hey, where's Trudy anyway? Joe, I saw you ride up. Uh, did you hear from Grandpa Harker yet? Uh, I just sent the telegram last night. It'll take a little time. But I made a deal with a man in the telegraph office to bring it here just as soon as he gets it. Trudy, like some coffee? Oh, yeah, sure. One thing I like in the morning, it's good hot coffee. And we noticed. I, uh, I got you some new clothes for your trip to San Francisco. New clothes? For me? Oh. Gee, thanks, little Joe. Before. These don't look to be too sturdy, little Joe. Don't you reckon they'll wear out awful quick? Uh, Trudy. Um, why don't you take take these upstairs and try them on there? And I'm sure your instincts will tell you what goes with what. Uh, yeah, little Joe, as soon as I get this stuff figured out, I'll come down and, and you can tell me if and I was right. I think maybe you should have brought Maisie along. No, no, no. Little brother's an expert. He don't need any help. Jeb just brought the telegram from Mr. Harker. Oh? I don't get it. 
He doesn't want her to come to San Francisco. He wants to come here. Hmm? So he'll be here in two weeks. Just sign Harker. I don't know whether it's good or bad. I was so sure he'd want her to come there right away. Hmm. Of course, maybe he just wants to check, make sure this is really his granddaughter. Yeah, maybe. Well, that could be another reason. What's that? You know, the Harkers are fairly wealthy people, from what I've been given to understand. And, uh, well, they live a very social life. And, well, Trudy's from the mountains. Well, what does that got to do with it? She's part of the family. Joe, you don't understand. For the last 19 years, Trudy's been hidden up in the mountains, away from civilization. Well, the Harkers, you know, they... They live a life quite different from ours right here in the Ponderosa. Maybe they, uh, they want to look the girl over. Maybe they don't think that she'll fit into their kind of life. You mean I ain't good enough for them? Well, Trudy, come on down. You look lovely. That's it, ain't it? Just like my ma wasn't good enough. Oh, no, Trudy, we, we were just talking. Yeah, just what does a body have to be to be one of them? Yeah, to Trudy... Let's look at it calmly now. They, they, they do lead a different kind of life, and they, they think differently and talk differently, and, and they dress differently. Joe, could you teach me to, to talk and act like them before they get here? Trudy, it's, it's hard to learn a whole new way of life in, in two weeks. But, but if I tried, would you help me? Well, little Joe, you promised my grandpa. Oh, it ain't for him, just... It's for me. To show him I'm a lady, too. Trudy. Oh, Trudy, you... You are a lady. You have courage and you have honesty and... Well, those are the things that a person should be judged on, not just clothes and manners. Yeah, them and... things, though. Them, them clothes and, and manners. They're important to the Harkers, ain't they? Yeah, well, they, they, they might be important. Then I want to get them. Oh, it ain't just for my sake. It's for my ma's sake, too. Yeah. Will you help me, little Joe? Yeah. Yeah, I'll help you, Trudy. Trudy, why don't you rest for a while? You've been, you've been going at it pretty hard now for a couple of days. I don't have time, little Joe. I, I gotta learn it all, everything. Nobody's gonna say that I ain't. Nobody is going to say that I'm not fit. Just don't you give up on me, please, Joe. <laughs> don't worry, I ain't. <laughs> okay, come on, let's try it again. Trudy, put your arms down. You're making fun of me. I am not making fun of you. Well, nobody eats this way. In San Francisco, the society people do eat this way. With all of them forks? All of these forks. With, with all of these forks and, and spoons and glasses? Well, you don't need but one of each of them. And if you have to, you can get along without any of them. Look, I'm not going to argue with you about it. Now, you're going to learn it. We're going to go through it again, all right? Starting from the left. What is this? A fork. Yes, I know it's a fork. What kind of a fork? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. See? Okay. Ready to try it? Well, might as well get my feet wet. All right, now when a gentleman comes over and he wants to ask you to dance, he says, may I have the pleasure of this dance? 
pleasure. Ain't he taking a lot for granted? Then you're supposed to say to him, I'd be delighted. Do I gotta say that? Well, you have to say something like that. Why? Well, what if I ain't delighted? Well, just say it anyway, as a favor to me. I guess that's so that you won't feel bad if you don't want to dance with him, huh? Yeah, I, I think it's something like that. Come on. Now, put this arm here, see? Then you take my hand there. Don't, 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 don't squeeze my hand so tight. Well, I got a good, strong grip. I skinned and quartered an elk once all by myself. Hmm. Well, you j just relax when you're dancing, though. Try to, try to think of your partner as someone more, more charming and more exciting than an elk. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, on one. One. Sorry. It's all right. Here we go again. Ready? Let me get... Okay. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two... Great, that's you. It's uh, one o'clock, child. I couldn't sleep, Mr. Cartwright. I reckon you couldn't either. Either. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I heard someone moving around down here. And don't you think you ought to be in bed? Well, with Grandpa Harker coming tomorrow, I'm just too excited. Uh, well, you've been working very hard for the last two weeks, and you've done very well. But don't you think that you ought to look lovely and rested in the morning? But there's so much to do and remember. Oh, by the way, I've asked Annie Wilson to come over in the morning to help out with the last-minute details. Thank you. Right, so you haven't a thing to worry about. Tomorrow will be just fine. T tomorrow, I gotta do everything right. You will. I just gotta make him want me. I just gotta. Mr. Harker will want his granddaughter, whether she picks up the right fork or not, if he's any kind of a man. If he doesn't like me, I, I'll just die. No. Oh, you don't understand, Mr. Cartwright, what it's like sleeping on a, on a new soft bed for the first time, wearing pretty clothes and, and eaten off a tablecloth, just so. Must be very wonderful for you. I don't ever want to lose all that. I can hardly wait to get to San Francisco. All them tall buildings and, and them shiny bright carriages and fancy parties and wearing pretty clothes all the time. Well, Trudy, you know, it isn't all one big party. And all them stylishly dressed young men come to take you dancing. Trudy? Don't I remember little Joe saying something about a young man up in the mountains? You mean Paul? Well, uh, well so much has been happening to me. I, I ain't thought about him much lately. Yeah, I guess right now, tomorrow, is the most important thing on your mind. So uh, don't you think you better get some sleep? I'll try. But I won't shut my eyes a wink. In a minute, in a minute. Right now and hot. Here, I'll take those. Hey, hot singers. Hey, hot singers, no hot water in the guest rooms. Here, here, I'll, I'll take those. Five people yelling all the time. Only one hot sink. Let me have those. Let me have those. I won't talk to Trudy anyway. This fun? I can't breathe. You're not supposed to. Now, now hold tight. Ooh, I'm coming. Here, put this dress over your head. These things are burning my hands. I'm coming. I'm coming. Do the best you can. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be there. Oh, come on, these things are hot. Oh, well, all right. Hook up her dress. Sit down, sit down there. Don't worry, you remember everything now? I hope so. Okay, wh what do you do with your butter knife? 
I don't know. Well, just, just keep watching me. Do whatever I do. What, what foot do you lead off with when you're dancing? The left. I lead off with the left. You lead off with the right. Oh, the right, the right. You're scalping me! If you just hold still. Little Joe, they're coming. Oh, my gosh. Oh, little Joe, I can't remember nothing. Just relax. You're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. I'm, I'm going to up and die. I just know it. Parker? Cut right. Welcome to the Ponderosa. Thank you, sir. My granddaughter, Stephanie. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my son, Adam. How do you do? Stephanie, Mr. Harker. And my other son, Eric. We call him Horse. I'm charmed, Horse. Uh, no, ma'am, not, not Horse, just plain Horse. Uh, boys, would you look after the luggage and perhaps Mr. Harker and Miss Harker will come into the house. rather elegant, isn't it, Grandfather? Considering how deep we are in the wilderness. Mr. Cartwright, I've been looking forward to meeting you for some years. Well, thank you, sir. I, I didn't know San Francisco had ever heard of us. We have. Your Ponderosa is quite famous, sir. Well, thank you again. Now, I'm sure you must have had a long, tiring ride. You probably want to rest up a bit. Well, you're very thoughtful, sir. Mr. Cartwright, where's the young lady you promised to show us? Well, I'm sure you... Miss Harker, Mr. Harker, my youngest son, Joseph. I do. How are you, sir? And this, sir, is your granddaughter, Trudy. How do you do? It's a pleasure, my child. My other granddaughter, Stephanie. How do you do? How do you do? I'm looking forward to chatting with you, young lady, after I've rested. Mr. Cartwright? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse us. Interesting. Most interesting. I'll get a little more light in this room. That's better. And uh, I'll get some hot water. Will you please sit down a moment, Mr. Cartwright? Of course. If I may come directly to the point, sir. You know the reason I've come out here, don't you? Well, I presume it's uh, to see your granddaughter. Precisely. I made a mistake 20 years ago in disowning my son. He was a strong man. He had a good independent mind. Now, after I die, there will be little enough strength left in the Harker family. Stephanie will run through my money in a year. Oh, well, shirt sleeves, two shirt sleeves in three generations. Hmm? Yes, I'm afraid that's true. In my old age, I'm looking for an element of strength. My son's strength, if you will, to bring back into the Harker family. I'm hoping there's some of that strength in young Trudy. Well, Mr. Harker, I don't know if uh, Trudy's gonna be everything that you might want it to be. But I do know this. She's your granddaughter. you worry about it. I think you said howdy very well. Besides, you're going to get a chance to show off at dinner time. Oh, and that's Stephanie. Have you ever seen anyone so beautiful? I'm going to look like a new clip sheet next to her. Now, look, I think you're prettier than she is, and don't you forget it. All right, little Joe. Mr. Cartwright. Oh, hi. I thought you were going to rest for a little while. Oh, I'm much too excited to rest. It isn't every day that you meet an only cousin for the first time. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. Joseph, would you be sweet and do us a favor? I would like so much to talk to Cousin Trudy alone for a while. Oh, sure. So I'll go check on Hop Singh, see how he's making out with the biscuits. Well, now, Cousin Trudy, we must have a nice long chat. Tell me about yourself. 
It's what you've been doing all these years. Uh, well, I've been living up on the mountains with my grandpa. My other grandpa. Oh, yes. The one who asked the Cartwrights to wire us about you. And what did he tell you about us? That we were very rich? No, he... I mean, yes. Well, he didn't mean anything. Oh, don't apologize, my dear. Believe me, if I'd been you, stuck up there on some mountain and learned that I had some very rich relatives, I would have tried to get to them much sooner than you did. Oh, it's not that way. I mean, about the money. Grandpa said that you were all the kin I had. And you were hoping to be reunited with us, weren't you? Yes. I, I always thought the kinfolk should be together. <sighs> oh, come now, Cousin Trudy. You wouldn't fit into our life in San Francisco any more than I could live on your mountain. Now, Grandfather Harker is a very reasonable man. And I'm sure that you can work out a nice financial arrangement with him. Financial arrangement? I don't understand. What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about money. Isn't that what you're really after? Oh, but that's wrong. You're wrong. I, I don't want any money. Hi, Trudy. What are you doing here? Well, I just uh, came down to see how you was doing. I want to tell you that a uh, little lamb died this morning. Lamb? Oh, what lamb? Hey, you've changed, Trudy. Pretty dressed and everything. Oh, no, I almost didn't recognize you there for a minute. Cousin Trudy, don't you introduce your acquaintances? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Paul Magruder, the, this is my cousin Stephanie. I do, ma'am. How do you do? Are you a friend of Trudy's from up in the mountains? Well, yes, I'm. Uh, we spoke for each other. Does that mean that you're Trudy's fiance? Well, I guess that's what it means. Uh, we're going to get married. Oh, I never said I would. You didn't? Well, he said he's going to come back. My, but this is fascinating news. May I offer my congratulations? Well, thank you, Cousin Stephanie, but nothing's settled yet. Well, I would say it's all settled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm sure an engaged couple must have lots to talk about. Oh, Paul. Why did you have to come down here? And why just now? Well, I missed you. I wanted to see what she's doing, that's all. Well, I'm doing all right. Didn't you think I'd be able to manage things? And why? Why did you have to tell her we was spoken for? There ain't nothing wrong with a body telling the truth. Well, it ain't the tr isn't the truth. At least why not right now. I gotta find out about Grandpa Harker first. If and he wants me, if, if I'm good enough. Good enough? What do you mean, good enough? Oh, Paul, you don't understand. Tonight, tonight is so important. Paul, please, you, you go on back to that mountain. And as soon as I know, I'll send for you. You ain't coming back, are you, Trudy? Oh, you, you just don't understand, please. Hey, Paul, when would you get here? Hello, Joe. I just came down to see Trudy, that's all. Well, come on inside. No, she don't want to see me. What are you talking about? Trudy tell you that? Just the same as she said she's going to send for me when her folks got her settled. Doc Paul, I don't think she meant that. What's going on around here, little Joe? Something's changed her. I think maybe she's a little upset. It's been a big day for her meeting her relatives. Mm hmm. Well, maybe I'd just like to meet them folks myself. You think he'd fix that up for me? See any reason why not? Why don't we go to the bunkhouse and clean up? We'll have dinner in a little while. Thank you, Hobson. Mr. Cartwright, this fowl is delicious. Mmm, simply marvelous. Which wine was used in the sauce? I believe Hopsing uses a sauterne, and the grapes of which are uh, grown not too far from your part of the country, Mr. Harker. Well, whatever it is, it's uh, right tasty. Paul, use your fork. Cousin Trudy, why don't you let your friend eat in his own fashion? Uh, Mr. Harker, I thought 
Perhaps tomorrow we might ride around the Ponderosa, and then you can take a look at our livestock operation. That would be most interesting to me, Mr. Cartwright. I've told my business associates time and time again that the resources of this country... Oh, piffle, Grandfather. Do we have to go into that sort of thing now? My dear, you'll find that if you give a man half a chance, all he wants to talk about is business. I suppose. How about you, Mr. Magruder? I was hoping you might show us where you live. Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty poor piece, ma'am. It's up in the high country on the North Fork of the Bushy Creek. Bushy Creek. What a quaint name. Is that where you have your house? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's not a house, exactly. It's a cabin. Build it yourself, no doubt. Sure did. Including the dirt floor. Stephanie, that'll be enough. But, Grandfather, I was just asking about the house because I want to know if that's where he intends to take his wife. Stephanie, I fail to see where any of this is our concern. Grandfather, you mean Cousin Trudy hasn't told you that Mr. Magruder is her fiance? They're engaged to be married. Trudy, is this true? Well, you see, Grandpa, I... Go ahead and tell him, Trudy. Paul and me, we, we've known each other a long time. Well, are you going to marry him? I guess she's not... Excuse me for pushing in here, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Paul, sit down. You're welcome here any time, you know that. Well, thank you very much, sir, but if it's all the same to you, I'd like to stay in a bunkhouse tonight. I gotta get back up to the mountain first thing in the morning. I got a lot of things to do. There's a meadow up there that ain't never been turned to plow. And there's a creek up there that I gotta dam up. There's things up there in the high country a man needs for his family and his children. It's important to me. I used to think it was important to you, too, Trudy. I guess you found something else. Whatever it is, I wish you well. I'm very sorry. I, I seem to have started something. Yes. I think it's probably just as well. I think you're wrong, Grandpa. Dead wrong. Maybe Paul didn't know which one of them doodads to, to scoop up his vittles with. And maybe I don't either. But I've had enough upbringing to know that you don't make fun of somebody sitting at the same table with you. Trudy, I just want you to know that I'd be proud to have you come and live with me in San Francisco. Up to now, I... I felt that the Harker family had almost lost its last vestige of courage and honesty. Grandpa, thank you. But I know where I belong now. It's with Paul and the things he believes in. And I guess it's high time I stopped trying to be something I'm not. I grew up on that mountain. But I reckon I belong there. Trudy? I'll be leaving come morning. Well, Miss Stephanie, it was nice having you here at the Ponderosa. Cartwright, I'd like to say... As I told you before, Stephanie, you've said enough already. I just wanted to thank you for your hospitality. You're very welcome. Well, goodbye, sir. Hoss will meet you in Virginia City with your tickets for San Francisco. And I'm, I'm sorry that your trip wasn't all that you thought it would be. On the contrary, I found the granddaughter I was looking for. The fact that she won't be living with me won't change that. No. Perhaps someday she'll come to see me. Will you please tell her that for me? I think you can tell her that for yourself. I just wanted to say goodbye, Grandpa Harker. 
Well, I'm sorry if I've disappointed you. You didn't disappoint me, child. I'm proud of you. And when you feel like it, I hope both you and your husband will come to visit me. Goodbye, Cousin Stephanie. Goodbye, Trudy. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, Trudy, what now? Well, little Joe's helped with Paul tie my things on my horse, and I guess we'll be going. Trudy, something I'd like to say to you. You're a real lady. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. At least I learned what a real lady is. 